Hey, what's up booktube? Mia coming back again with another book review and it's one that I just finished and I'm super hyped about it. So let's discuss The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. Been around booktube for a while now, very hyped up book. I gave it a 2.5 to 3 stars. I know I really enjoyed the book and why such a low rating. We'll get more to that later in the video. Just a disclaimer, this video might contain some spoilers, so if you haven't read the book and you don't want to be spoiled, go back, read it, and then come back and watch the video, then let's discuss, okay? So just a quick sum up of the book. This book follows a girl named Jude who was um, taken from her mortal parents. Her mortal parents was murdered, and now she lives in the fairy world with her stepfather, um, pretty much her step-parent with her twin sister and her oldest sister who's also a fairy. And it basically is just following Jude trying to fit into this fairy world, wanting to belong so bad but knowing that that is definitely not a possibility. She is literally tortured like school bullying times 100 by the cruel prince who is Cardin. And he basically just is there to make her life miserable until we find out later that he's really like in love with her. Once again, more about that a little bit later in the video. Let's start off with the characters. I didn't really feel connected with any of the characters. They were all very flat to me. And it could just be because it's book one. Usually book one is usually the setup. You get to introduce your characters. But overall, I didn't really feel no connection with any of them. Probably be the most interesting character was Jude. So I guess that's a point for the author. I, I was intrigued by her thoughts in the book. I don't really think she had any personal growth. I think she was kind of just stagnant the whole book but we do get to um, really go into her mindset about wanting to belong and the her stepfather was the one who killed her parents and even though he killed them or murdered them I should say she still kind of felt this love towards him because you know he has been raising her for the last 10 years so that was kind of very interesting very cringe worthy too i guess that's like that stockholm syndrome kind of thing because even though she is like miserable living in the fairy world she still don't have no inkling to want to leave and i don't even know if that's even a possibility if she can leave or not but it's never shown that she wants there's like a scene in the book where she and her oldest sister i think her name was like Vivi or something they go to the mortal world she goes to the mall and Vivi is meeting her girlfriend there who is you know human and she Vivi wants to live back in the mortal world whereas Jude is like no I, I just want to go back to the fairy court you know where she's being tortured on a daily basis so that kind of I didn't really get um but it was interesting it was something different that you don't normally see in YA literature um you have her twin sister Tyra Taryn something like that who for me is like I don't even know why Jude even they even wrote Jude to even have a twin sister I unless it's going to play something in the next book it was just non-existent except for the point that she was only there really to be and like I said if you read the book you know what I'm talking about <laughs> the girlfriend of the guy that she was seeing at one point that's a whole messy situation there which I did not like at all because when Locke was introduced in this book I just knew he was up to no good it was like okay well what's the point like these girls have been here for 10 years being ridiculed and tortured and being compulsed to do things that they don't want to do and then all of a sudden Locke comes on the scene talking about how much he's um he loves her and wants to be with her and she just falls right into his arms and it's like hello <laughs> this is the same guy who's been hanging out with the prince who's been you i'm rambling that's another that's another issue it seemed to be like the only person that had any good interest for Jude was I think it was like the nanny or like the maid and she you know the one that helps them get like get ready and get dressed and stuff because she was the only one that was like giving them like the little berries to wear around their neck so that they can't be composed and you know making sure that they had salt in their lunches apparently I guess um fairies don't like salt <laughs> I don't know but I mean like I would have loved to see more of her I would have loved to see more more of her rather than the little spying crew that Jude was a part of which again was just like another bunch of characters in the book that kind of felt like it's like 
what is their purpose there? We don't see no training. They're not talking. They're not doing badass stuff where it's like you want to be a part of that spy game. I, I don't know. Let's also talk about the title itself, The Cruel Prince. Now, I knew Cardin was like really cruel, but then you also had uh, Prince Falcon, the one who like murdered his whole family to be a to be the next fairy king and then you had prince dane whoever it was that jude was working for is in the part of the spy thing and i'm sorry they was all kind of cruel too yeah you know they kind of allow the stuff to happen but they want to use jude to their advantage dane is all like oh you're a good liar i can use you never mind you know my my, my fairy court is torturing you all the time but i can use your skills and, you know, Belk in the same way, you know, he only wanted her alive because she knew where Cardin was. It was just very weird at points. Like, even like the whole ceremony where Belkin, um, you know, like I said, he was like assassinating like his sisters and brothers and stuff to get the crown. But then on the flip side, it's like, but someone in your family has to crown you, <laughs> you know, to be you know, the next fairy king. So what good is it for you to go carrying around shooting up everybody? And then the last person standing, you know, it's like, why would they crown you? Like that fairy court was like really, really weird. I don't know if it was just like underdeveloped or not. I don't know, I don't get it. The whole little brother being, um, you know, the king, the actual true heir and whatnot was like, what I think that was kind of like one of those like ex machina things where it's just like oh we need a solution hey these girls had a little brother running around this whole book that was just doing idiotic stuff <laughs> that like a, I think he's like a toddler maybe even a little bit older than that because the kid was talking and whatnot but I don't know it turns it, you know he's the true heir and Jude devises this plan to somehow have him crown but not live in a fairy world until he's grown up and ready to rule so basically she just put herself in as a figurehead because you know bing bang boom they do some little twisty twisty twist stuff and carlin is crowned the prince instead and she, he has indebted his service to her which is another thing that's kind of was like uh what the hell happened because we find out later a couple of chapters before that Carlin is in love with Jude and now Jude thinks she's in love with him and they're working together but they're not working together and it's it's one of those kind of slow relationships where it's kind of like this does not make any sense I'm sorry I don't know okay so that goes into why my book rating is 2.5 to 3. There were some parts that I did like about this book. I think some stuff was done pretty well. Um, it is a different type of novel than what I'm used to reading, especially in YA fantasy. I really don't read a lot of fairy novels. Um, so this was this was this was different. The timing, uh, the pacing, extremely slow. You'll, it, I mean, it'll, it would be like a hundred pages of them just walking to school uh being thrown in the lake uh <laughs> sword fighting training but nothing is really happening and oh can we mention the whole oh, jesus christ i can't remember i can't even remember these characters names but the fairy i think his name was like varian something maybe i don't know i gotta look it up but the, the fairy that she murdered because he was trying to compose her to like jump off the tower and drown herself and all that stuff and she finally you know they get into a battle and she stabs him and he dies so you know first she like hides him in his room and then eventually she winds up burying him and she kind of used that as like the hey i'm a badass you better do what i say i killed your friend with carded in that whole scene but the fact is it's like okay what was the point of it because it i thought it was like going to come out at the fairy counseling so I don't know. It was just very, 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 very weird. Um, I'm rambling. I think I'm gonna end it there. There's not. I don't think there's anything else I wanted to read. Will I continue with this series? Yes, definitely. Um, it is good enough to want to see what happens. But overall, it was a good read. So anyway, if you guys got any comments or this questions, discussions that you want to leave down below please feel free to do so. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.